All right, hello everybody. This is Bob Miller from Ironside. We're in the Ironside conference room. We've got a couple of iPads set up here to demonstrate some of the usability of an iPad for remote access. Uh, the first iPad we've got here has a Bluetooth keyboard dock, and it's also got the um, um, HDMI connector connected to a 23-inch external monitor. Uh, let you sit here and work on a larger display, so you don't have to stare at that 10-inch screen all day long if you're going to be doing a lot of work. So what we'll zoom in up here, we'll look at the monitor here, and the first thing we're going to do is go to this SonicWall Mobile Connect icon, which allows you to connect into your network remotely via the SonicWall SSL VPN. Um, so we've got this uh, connection here. We'll go ahead and get rid of this keyboard. Uh, we're going to we got here, we've got that, the display on the 10-inch screen. We're going to go ahead and, and start typing some of this in. Pardon me. I'll do this with one hand. All right, so we're going to go ahead and log in. And as we're logging in, we see it connecting. And as soon as it connects, in the upper left-hand corner, we see it just appeared. We've got a, a VPN um, icon showing up next to the wireless signal. This lets us know that we're connected to the VPN. While we're connected, we can access the network resources just as though we're using a computer sitting right there. Um, we're actually going to disconnect because since we're inside the office, the inside office, we're not going to be able to actually access those resources through a VPN connection. We're going to have to be local. So now we are back at the main screen. And one of the applications you can use to access files is called File Browser. So we'll launch that. And one of our servers internal is called Victoria. We've selected that. We've connected that up already. And you can see here, we'll go ahead and tap on it. Um, we've got our shares over there on the right-hand side. Down at the bottom, we've got a bookmarks um, um, tab that we can access. And it's sort of like drive letters on your desktop. So we'll click on data, and it refreshes the screen with the contents of the data folder. Um, internally, we use this as our M drive. Uh, down near the bottom, we've got the support escalation list, PDF file. Many of you are going to be familiar with that. And it comes right up in a viewer. Uh, and we can go ahead and, you know, look at the content, you know, the text, and here's what you do if you've got a technical problem, and et cetera. Um, the program is pretty basic. It works pretty, it works pretty well. Uh, we're going to go back to Victoria, and then we'll go in this way. We'll click on data. And um, let's go ahead and see if we can pull up I don't know, let's just go to our documents folder and one of our forms. Um, I don't know, we've got a change order form uh, that we use. And it uh, comes right up in the viewer. We can't edit it right here. We can view it pretty quickly. Can't edit it, but what we'll do is we will um, go back to um, Victoria, then the documents, and then the, the forms. And then what I wanted to show was if we go to the change order form, we hit the um, blue arrow to the right, we can go to open in. We tap that, and we can choose whether we want to use uh, Quick Office or Dropbox. In this case, obviously, we're going to use Quick Office to open the document. It's going to open up Quick Office Pro HD, and the document's right here. It's ready to go. We can go ahead and tap on something. We can, we can go ahead and make our changes. Let me bring it all up here. For some reason, it's not like in the... Bluetooth keyboard pairing today. We do have a bunch of Bluetooth devices right here in range though, so all over us, so that might be part of the reason why. Um, but we can go ahead and make these changes. The one limitation of, of working like this is that we can't make, we can't save the changes. So when we go to save changes, it tells us um, that the document is um, read only. Um, so we have to choose to save it on the local iPad. Uh, the workaround for right now is to um, we're not going to save that change, obviously. The workaround right now is to, uh, we would use Dropbox or some other synchronization software to, to get the files to synchronize with the iPad for remote use, but um, this is also a work in progress. We're going to um, jump back here and look over here at this iPad that we have set up, also connected um, to the internal uh, wireless network and See, so we've got the Victoria server over here set up again. This is a different uh, file browser application, and it allows us to do have a little bit more functionality. I think file browser is five dollars on the app market. This one, I think, is around twenty dollars. Uh, you can do a lot of things like like play music um, as you're working, and a bunch of other things like that. You can actually remotely control a PC right from here as well. But just like just like file browser, you can go ahead and open up documents. So we've got 
the support escalation. We can choose to view it. And we've got that same document here available to view. We have um, the ability, of course, to be able to go to let's see our documents. And then we've got forms. And we'll go to that same change order form uh, as soon as I see it here. Now we can go to something else. And we'll check photocopy form. Uh, we can go to view. And it gives us that same um, preview, doc preview form. What we can do is go up here to open and then choose, in this, on this iPad we have documents to go. So we can go ahead and launch that. And now we can edit anything anywhere that we like. You know, blah, 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 blah. Hello, how are you? Um, when we go to save, just like in um, Quick Office HD, we're gonna have a problem because it's not gonna let us save to the network. Um, but we're trying to figure out ways to work around that. Um, but we can save it locally as well. One of the best ways to work around something like this is to remotely control uh, a PC or a server or something like that. So it could be a terminal server or it could just be the PC or laptop that you use at the office. Probably the best app for that is this um, uh, Wise Pocket Cloud. This one is the free version. Oh, no, actually, this is the paid version on here, which will let you have unlimited connection types, and I believe it's $15 in the app market. Um, we'll click on connect. We have Victoria set up already. And here we are, we're loading. And we're connected into the Windows server just as though we were sitting there. It even adjusts the resolution for us, so it's the same resolution as the iPad. And we've got the whole screen available to us. This button down here brings up the uh, option bar. And we will bring the mouse up. And this will allow us to use the mouse. This is actually the mouse on the screen. If you were looking at the screen there, you'd see the mouse there. We can double tap. We can um, bring up more options like right mouse click. Right from there, we can uh, we'll get rid of that there. We can bring up the keyboard right from here. Make sure I'm tapping it here. Um, we have all the capability that we have locally to remotely control this machine. It's very powerful and works very well. And a lot of us use this um, for, for remote support. What we're going to do is we're going to take this. Um, we can uh, use it to um, uh, pinch to zoom. Uh, we can we can manipulate the. Um, we can go into the recycle bin. We can manipulate. We can man manipulate this just like we would do anything else on a uh, on a Windows machine. Tap that out of there, and it's very powerful and works very well. And we're going to exit out of that. And. Um, Probably the biggest thing that you would miss using an iPad would be your mouse. So, in order to get a mouse, Apple does not allow you to have mouse drivers on an iPad that may be coming um, as people are using tablets to replace their laptops and their notebooks, but for right now, Apple doesn't support that. So what we can do instead is use, um, on a jailbroken app, uh, we can use, uh, we can hook up a Bluetooth mouse. So I've got an iPhone here that's jailbroken iPad 2's are, the jailbreak is coming out probably this week, and as you can see here, um, this is a jailbroken app that allows us to connect a Bluetooth mouse, so we can set that Bluetooth mouse to discoverable, and once it's connected, as soon as it connects here, there we go, once it's connected, it'll find the mouse. And then here we go. Now we're able to manipulate the display with the mouse. It's kind of weird looking at an iPhone with a mouse, but we've got Quick Office. Launch Quick Office. And just like on your computer, you can click, move the mouse around. Um, there's obviously that keyboard button down here for editing this particular document. Um, go out here. If we want to make a selection, Make it bring up the selection, normal selection icon. We can drag this around and we can copy and paste. We can do all the things we're normally used to doing. Combined with a Bluetooth keyboard, that can be pretty, pretty effective. You can even use it to tap on the buttons. It's basically the same thing as um, um, uh, using your, your, your hands, but it's a little bit, it gives you the mouse functionality. Um, if we're using Pocket Cloud here, we can go to the computers. This is the free version of Pocket Cloud on there on the phone. We'll click on Victoria so we can get a connection to it. 
There we go. And just like the tablet, you'll see it'll change the resolution of um, the display to. Hmm, I wonder if I'm connected to the right wireless network. We'll make sure here in a second. Um, but it'll change the resolution of the display to the iPhone's resolution. Um, so you have a full display available to you. No, nope, doesn't look like that's going to connect. So we'll get back to our settings. Make sure we're on the right wireless network. Nope, we're on the open and unrestricted one. All right. Go back over here to the Pocket Cloud. We'll launch into Victoria. And now we've got a connection. And we'll get rid of this. And as you can see, we've got an actual full <laughs> Windows uh, desktop on the iPhone. And we're able to use the mouse and we can click around in there just like uh, we're sitting there. Very tiny screen, but you can get the idea of how it will work for the iPad. The original iPad is jailbroken already. The um, iPad 2 is supposed to be jailbroken this week, so we'll see how that goes. And we'll leave that the way that it is. So I hope that we've got um, given you some sort of, of an indication of how well this will work on, um, we're going to open this up here, how well this will work in, a, in an office environment or at a home environment connecting into the office. Uh, feel free to contact us with any other questions.